My name is Richard Webber. I'm a visiting professor at the University of Newcastle and I'm the originator of two geodemographic systems, ACORN and Mosaic. So 50 years ago there was no internet on which people could advertise. They had to rely to recruit new customers on the television, on newspapers, posters or leaflet distribution. And some more forward-looking large organisations like the Reader's Digest and Great Universal Stores recognised that direct mail was also a very cost-effective medium for recruiting new customers. The post office began to realise that they could increase the level of business substantially if they could persuade advertisers to use direct mail rather than print, television, posters or whatever. And therefore they developed a set of resources which they linked together uh, which they called the consumer location system. Now, what they needed to be able to do was to provide potential advertisers with names and addresses of adults in the country. They needed to be able to say which of those adults were likely to buy their products based on the characteristics of the postcodes in which they lived. And the third thing they needed to do was to be able to demonstrate to the potential advertisers why certain categories of postcodes, like Greenbelt Guardians for example, might be the best sort of area for the National Trust to try to recruit some new customers. So they put those three resources together and this became a, an extremely valuable resource for the post office to win new business from these other forms of advertising. So ACORN is the system which the post office used in order to help potential advertisers, mail order users, recognise the best types of neighbourhood to target. ACORN divided the country into 52 different types of neighbourhood. And these 52 types of neighbourhood are far more discriminating in terms of finding good or bad prospects for different products than trying to classify people by social class or by housing or by age. So ACORN was a multi-dimensional classification and it classified people not so much just on their own characteristics but according to the characteristics of their neighbours. And what I think is obvious really when you think about it is that you are hugely influenced by what your neighbours buy, what they do, what they talk to you about over the garden fence. And people in this country and other countries mostly go and choose to live in neighbourhoods where they think that they will get on and have similar values and lifestyles to the other people in their street. So the reason why geodemographics were so effective in enabling people to target potential customers was because it is a social system and relies on people's networks and discussions with school gates at work and everything at the pub. And this is really a much more effective way of trying to reach people. When we talk about different types of neighbourhoods, uh, many people think this is magic. How does the computer manage to come up with these rather interesting categories? Like Pebble Dash Subtopia doesn't know that houses are pub Pebble Dash. Now the reason why the computer can do this is that we feed into it uh, maybe a hundred or more different characteristics of a neighbourhood many of which come from the census, but quite a few come from other sources. And what the computer is clever enough to do, which we can't with our own minds, is to sift through this huge amount of information and use a kind of artificial intelligence to group together different neighbourhoods which seem to the computer to be fairly similar across a large number of different characteristics. And when we give the computer free reign to come up with categories, we tend to find that they end up being different in terms of the age of the housing, uh, in terms of the type of housing, um, in terms of whether they're in big cities or small towns or the countryside. And there are many, many more dimensions that the computer is able to recognise in all this data than we can cope with if we just think in terms of age and income and owner occupiers versus tenants and so forth. But we have to rely on the intelligence of the computer to come up with better categories than what we could come up with as social scientists. When I talk about ACORN I could say the same about Mosaic because these two systems are broadly similar in terms of their use. 
I originated both of them. Um, the ACORN system was the more well established, but in the early days, the ACORN system relied on data almost exclusively from the census, which was for fairly large geographically, it was much bigger than individual postcodes. And what Mosaic did that ACORN couldn't do was to distinguish within a, a bigger area how different some of the postcodes are. But because Mosaic is built on different data characteristics and because the units are right down to the level of the postcode rather than the larger area covered by the census, typically, in my experience, Mosaic tends to work a bit better than ACORN. In this exhibition, you will find an interactive exhibit where you're encouraged to type in your own postcode and uh, the screen will then show you a picture which will look hopefully rather like the street where you live and it will tell you the sorts of things that dis differentiate your street from other streets in terms of buildings or age or income but also in terms of probably newspaper usage or consumer preferences generally, what you spend your money on. Probably see people who look a bit like yourself in this collage, and we hope so, but I hope that will give you some idea of how the complexity of data can be simplified into a visual image which does correspond to your own experience of streets when you travel around the town you live in.